Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Recently, I sat down with Alan of Mental Misplay to discuss his favorite commander and precon, Marin of Clan Nel Toth from 2015's Plunder the Graves. The challenge, though, is that as a precon out of the box, it just doesn't stand up to the modern precon design standards. Compare a deck like Plunder the Graves or Mind Seize to a Buckle Up or Party Time and you'll find there's a massive difference in deck building philosophy. Old precons were like hubs. They gave you multiple options to branch a deck out in, often three to four different themes to work around based on three to four different unique legendaries in the deck. But modern precons? They feature only two legends to center a deck around and are therefore a lot more focused. So Alan and I set out to update the Plunder the Graves precon for 2023. What would it look like if it were released today? Let's start with Marin of Clan Neltoth. This 4-mana 3-4 human shaman is the definition of a passive commander. She's got nothing that incentivizes her to attack or get her hands dirty. Instead, she reads, Whenever another creature you control dies, token or otherwise, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your end step, choose target creature card in your graveyard. Return it to the battlefield if its mana value is less than or equal to your experience. Otherwise, return it to your hand. Experience counters are these little things. They're intangible counters that you, as a player, get. Like poison counters, almost. They can be proliferated, but currently there are no ways to remove experience counters. Neat! Marin here gives us an interesting direction to take the deck in. She wants us to have our own creatures go to the graveyard, and our creatures return to play. Partly Aristocrat, partly Reanimator. All nightmare for our opponents. Before we take a look at the list, though, be sure to hit all those good buttons. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to join the Brew Crew and never miss a sweet deck tech. Since Marin wants our creatures dying, but she herself does not allow us to sacrifice creatures, we need to factor that into this build. What creatures do we want dying? What creatures do we want coming back? And how are we sacrificing them? If we keep our utility on smaller bodies, it means we can have them prepared and ready to go when our commander reaches the battlefield. If we can sacrifice a creature the turn Marin comes into play, we could be returning it back to our hand immediately with her end of turn trigger. So, we decided to keep some of this utility at the low end of the curve. Creatures that sacrifice themselves like Sporefrog, Canker Bloom, and Sakura Tribe Elder are amazing, as they generate repeated value, deter threats, or provide two experience counters thanks to Proliferate. It's also important to keep sacrifice outlets at the lower mana value too. Carrion Feeder, Viscera Seer, and Soldevi Adnate are like free sacrifice outlets, again getting us the value of triggering Marin the turn she enters the battlefield, and in most cases, bringing themselves right back to the battlefield. Technically sacrifice outlets, Fleshbag Marauder, Plague Crafter, and Braid's Arisen Nightmare get creatures into our graveyards, and our opponents. In the case of Braid's, stacking our end of turn triggers means that we can have our cake and eat it too, while munching on opponent's creatures or drawing cards. It's when our sacrifice outlets reach much higher mana values when we start to see a lot more value from them. Like on Shadowheart Dark Justicar or Sivorous Nightmare Speaker, these two mono black legends let us draw cards from sacrificing our creatures or fill our yard with more threats while returning gas to our hand or slowly damaging opponents. Incredible value. And value really is the name of the game, and why Marin already has a reputation of being a strong commander. The ability to bring back Sakura Tribe Elder or a Plague Crafter over and over again, each of your turns, creates the kind of multiplicative value that, honestly, today's precons have built in by default. It's about time Marin saw a more streamlined build that flexes her capabilities at the $45 budget level. Now, you may notice that the majority of our sacrifice outlets are on creatures, for good reason. With 37 creatures in the deck, we want to lean into Marin's ability as a strong indicator of what the deck wants to do. There are only 10 non-permanent spells in the list, and that's to ensure we're never in a situation where we have Marin, but little to no creatures to start generating experience with. So while we have included cards like Evolutionary Leap, letting us sacrifice creatures and get new ones to our hand, or Awakening Zone, an enchantment that creates us little creatures that sacrifice themselves for fun or profit, and Victimize, probably the best reanimation spell for this deck since it gets us experience counters and two big threats back from the yard, 
you will find that most of what we've got in this list is on a body. Marin demands a sacrifice. We absolutely will be sacrificing creatures, especially ones with enter the battlefield effects. I'm talking about Wood Elves, Wall of Blossoms, or Solemn Simulacrum. Creatures that get a strong enters the battlefield effects to draw cards or ramp, but are just as good dead as they are alive. And if we can get them coming back from the graveyard again and again, they just get that much better. Now we've got our sacrifice effects, our sacrifice fodder, but how are we winning the game? Good question. The original precon included some bombs to help us win. Overwhelming Stampede, Eldrazi Monument, and Pathbreaker Ibex, but now they're all too expensive to keep in a modern precon list with a $45 budget. So let's find some alternatives. First, we have good old combat. A beater like Vulturous Zombie is fantastic and can get massive while having evasion, but even better if we suit it up with a Night Howler or a Bone Horde and start getting the benefit from us filling our graveyards. We also have the go-to of Sir Conrad the Grim in the deck to slowly whittle down life totals as we dump creatures into the bin and bring them back out. If we're ever in the need for more fuel in the graveyard, his activated ability can get us even further. And it may be janky, but Dragon Throne of Tarkir is a decent way to turn all of our creatures into battling threats. I mentioned earlier that Marin is a passive commander, her herself not wanting to get into combat, which is perfect for an equipment that gives the equipped creature defender. Let Marin sit on her throne, and every turn she can pump your whole team to the tune of an overrun. Even better if you can suit her up with a Night Howler or a Bone Horde first. There's also the Crater Hoof Behemoth we have at home, and raise Forerunners. On a budget, these guys can be game enders, with the benefit of being a solid 7 7 with Vigilance and Trample if we're reanimating them at the end of turn. And of course, we're able to include Grey Merchant of Asphodel, maybe the best creature for ending games in multiplayer. Gary here can nuke opponents multiple times a turn thanks to our reanimation effects and put our own life total way out of reach of opponents. As for some of the other goodies in the deck, we managed to keep Skull Clamp. Yes, that Skull Clamp, which was part of the original precon. It's a little pricey for a budget brew, but it makes a massive difference in your card draw potential and is worth every dollar if you can squeeze it in. These colors also have amazing removal, ranging from board wipes like Languish and Culling Ritual, able to take out smaller creatures easily and ratchet up our experience counters, through to targeted removal like Casualties of War, Beast Within, and Putrefy, altogether able to destroy any type of permanent we want on demand. This wouldn't be a build your own precon though without the pivot. And in this deck we've got a few options. Shadowheart and Sivorus can both pair with Cloakwood Hermit to form a great lead for the deck, but we could also try Veral's the Scar Striped as our commander. This 3 mana 2-2 two -two troll warrior gives creature cards in your graveyard scavenge, meaning you can pay their mana value and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature you control equal to its power. But he also is a sacrifice outlet on demand in the command zone, letting us sacrifice another creature for free to regenerate him. This naturally makes him very sticky when we get him on the board, only able to be removed by sacrifice effects or shrink effects or exile effects or anything that prevents regeneration. Surprisingly few in number. But having a sacrifice outlet in the command zone lets us lean further into Golgari Aristocrats. This allows us to pivot some of our build to care more about our creatures dying and bringing them back. We can branch out to include more Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat effects, along with Bastion of Remembrance to ensure we're slowly draining opponents each and every time we lose a creature. Adapting our top end to include classics like Avenger of Zendikar would be great too, even if we aren't ramping out of control by recurring Wood Elves and Sakura Tribe Elder, it gives us more than enough plants to sacrifice for big bombs of synergistic damage. We'd need to include more effects to get creatures back from the graveyard if we are pivoting in this direction though. Phyrexian Reclamation is a classic, and Oversold Cemetery works wonders if you're getting back value creatures or those that make friends on Enters the Battlefield. We could also lean into Veral's scavenge ability further, putting more creatures in the list with lower mana values than power for cheap additional counters. Hunted Horror is a great example of this, 2 mana for 7 counters, and while it's prohibitively expensive, 
Phyrexian Dreadnought is potentially 12 counters for a single mana. Not bad at all. But speaking of prohibitively expensive, let's talk about the upgrade. If I were to add an additional $50 to this brew, where would I start? Well, I mentioned Overwhelming Stampede earlier. It's not keepable at $3 in a $45 list, but if we're looking at a $95 list, it's much more reasonable to keep over Dragon Throne of Tarkir. On that note, a Triumph of the Hordes isn't a bad thing either. That is 15 whole dollars of our budget, so be mindful. And since experience counters can be proliferated like poison counters, adding in ways to proliferate repeatedly is always useful. Contagion Clasp can act as removal and repeated experience counters for just an additional dollar. The particularly nasty usually fill their deck with Grave Pack, but at $30 it's a lot to ask. Luckily Dictate of Erebos is just $12 and does the same thing. Just don't say I didn't warn you when your opponents come after you for potentially locking down their boards. And if you really want your deck to work in some more straight lines, picking and choosing what's in your yard to reanimate, there are some tutors for you. Entomb, Buried Alive, and Unmarked Grave all let you pick and choose which threats Marin can pluck out of the yard. It's just as good as tutoring them to hand, and often half as expensive. Be sure to check out the full podcast where Alan and I discuss some of these inclusions in the deck, linked up top, and be sure to check out the full deck list at my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world, and lets you see the exact costs of cards based on your preferred resellers and currency too. My profile and the full deck list is linked below. Give me a follow while you're there. Check out these other build your own precon brews, and if you were inspired to revisit your favorite precon, you have to hit that subscribe button. As always folks, good luck and have fun.